Hey, what's going on guys? This is Brian with Superman's Comics, and well, I'm proud to present to you the CBSI Hot 10 Comics of the Week. With me as always is my co-host Jack DeMeo, aka Mr. Bolo. What's going on, buddy? Oh man, Brian, I'll tell you, I'm excited to be here for the debut episode of the CBSI Hot 10 Comics show right here on the official CBSI YouTube network, Simpleman's Comics. So not only do Jack and I run the Simple Man's Comics YouTube channel, but we are also social media content managers for comicbookinvest.com. Absolutely, comicbookinvest.com is the home of CBSI, and the Hot 10 list has been the flagship piece of content on comicbookinvest.com since 2015. It is written by CBSI writer Ben Steiniger, aka Ben Stein, or Ben S as he's called, who works tirelessly to compile this list using eBay sales data, heritage auctions, as well as reported private sales. So with that being said, Jack, are you ready to get into the Hot 10 Comics this week? Well, hold up, Brian. Almost. But we actually have two honorable mentions as well. I'm talking about two books that almost made the list, but just didn't quite make it. Oftentimes, these books will later end up on the Hot 10 list, but for right now, they are honorable mentions. And the first honorable mention for this week is Haphazard number 13. What can you tell us about this book, Jack? Well, this is a real interesting one because something that's important to note is that Ben Stein likes to include one Golden Age book, usually in the honorable mentions. And this book is a book that fits that bill to the T. It's got an overstreet value guide at $100, but recently there was reported sales of $700. And this is a trend that we're seeing in the market with Golden Age books going up in value quicker than Overstreet can keep up with the pricing. Right, and it's crazy because the Overstreet guide just came out. so It's already out of date. <laughs> yeah. Just as you said, I do love the fact that Ben always... At least 99.9999% of the time includes Golden Age as an honorable mention. And doing a complete 180 from Golden Age, our next honorable mention is Amazing Spider-Man 666. Now this is a book that I almost didn't believe the sales data Ben reported when he sent it to us. We're talking about Sp Amazing Spider-Man 666, a book that so many stores, I can't even count the amount of stores, did a store exclusive for. And I'm not talking about these unique covers that we see today. I'm talking about one of the original store exclusives, where the only real difference in the book was the store name or logo. These books have readily been available on the secondary market for the last seven or eight years for as little as $5. And suddenly, we're seeing sales as high as $175 on some of these books, with many routinely going for $35, $40, $45 and up. Yeah, and that's completely crazy to me because I've seen a lot of store exclusives before, especially of this type caliber with just the store or whatever logo on them, and they never reach prices like this. So to see this with a Spider-Man book... Just tells you how crazy the hobby is right now. Right. But then again, this is one of those things you guys should be on the lookout for. Because there's a good chance sitting in your local LCS or in a long box at your next convention, you're going to be able to find these books cheap. Because most dealers may not be aware of the trending up price on these books. Right. And because they're, they're store exclusives, they just want to unload them. So you can find them in those cheap dollar bin five dollar bin boxes so now that we've covered the honorable mentions for this week we're going to get right into the hot 10 comics and coming in at number 10 is actually an indie comic from red five comics called riptide this book saw some heat when it first came out but recently with new option news is escalating quickly absolutely riptide number one from red five comics has been a book talked about on the cbsi network and on comicbookinvest.com by multiple contributors but andy tomblin of the indie spotlight series has been talking about this book for quite a while this book has recently shot up from ten dollars to highs of 25 dollars with said option news that you spoke of this book has been on the hot 10 list before i believe you won't have the opportunity this time but previously when it came on it was escalated on the secondary market where Red 5 had it available on their site still for cover. So it's crazy how the comp market works, but you're not going to find it on their site for cover right now. No, those days are over. In at number 9 is a book that just came out, and it's one of the hottest titles in comic books right now, but we're talking about Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles number 96. And what's so important about this book, Jack, and why do you think it's heating up? Well, again, this was... 
the AKA Mr. Bolo long-term play of the week this week. And it is hot for one reason, Jenica. Jenica, of course, being the first female turtle. Now, a lot of people are saying this is a first appearance, but as I said on the Bolo show, I'm of the school of thought that 95 is the true first appearance. And 96 is still important because it's a connecting issue to 97, which will be the first time that Jenica dons that yellow Ninja Turtles mask and joins the turtle team. So currently, the Sophie Campbell 1 in 10 variant, which is selling for $40, so that's four times ratio right now. And to be honest, I kind of see it going a little bit higher before it drops back down again. Absolutely, turtle power is running rampant in the comic community. Right, so it's anxious to see what 97 will do, and so on and so on, because right now, everyone's buying these Ninja Turtle comics. And coming in at number eight, is a book near and dear to my heart. One, not only because I'm a Star Wars fan, but two, because I'm a huge Disney fan. And we're talking about Star Wars Galaxy Edge number four. This is the one in 25 Stacey Lee variant. And if you weren't aware, Disneyland and Disney World have brand new Star Wars lands added to them. And Galaxy's Edge is a huge backstory to one of the rides that takes place in that land. But what can you tell us about this Stacey Lee variant, Jack? Now this one in 25 incentive is selling for between 40 and $50. And while that may surprise you, it really shouldn't. If you've been watching the Hot 10 list, you will know that these Star Wars variants oftentimes eclipse ratio. Sometimes it takes a couple weeks, but Star Wars fans tend to be completionists. And these books aren't on a lot of stores' radar and aren't on a lot of speculators' radar. And then all of a sudden they dry up and those prices shoot up. And I love how it has the crossover appeal for fans that visit the park as well as just diehard Star Wars fans, as you mentioned before. Absolutely. Star Wars fans are always buying. And in at number seven this week is a store exclusive variant, and we're talking about the House of X number one Shannon Mayer variant. Yes, and now Shannon Mayer has shown up on this list before, and we previously talked about a store exclusive, but this is much different. Recently released only a couple weeks ago, this book is already shooting up in price. And I think it's really indicative not only of the popularity of the return of the X-Men under the Jonathan Hickman banner, but also on Shannon Mayer's continuous rising star in the comic art community. Right, because he did a couple of those deceased variants as well. And to me, this cover was gorgeous, so I can definitely see why it's sought after and in demand and why the prices are hot and why it's on this list. Absolutely, and I would say... Be on the lookout for that upcoming Ghost Spider number one Shannon Mayer variant because it is absolutely incredible. And I believe pre-sales for that cover you're talking about go on sale this weekend, so make sure you're on the lookout for that. Yeah, and time will tell if that book will shoot up to $100 like this one has. And coming in at number six on the hot list, we have Scout Comics Gut Ghost number one. Now this had a regular cover, a secret variant, as well as a virgin variant, right? Right. This Enzo Garza Scout Comics release was one of the talk of the speculation community this week and probably the biggest indie release. The regular cover is selling for $10 to $15. We're seeing that secret variant selling for about $35 and that Scout.com release selling for about $60. Now, it's important to note that that secret variant, only about 100 copies of that ended up in LCSs. The other 200 were on Scout's website selling for $10. Now, were there other covers for this also? Were there any ash cans? Oh, yes, Brian. Gut Ghost has appeared in several publications. We're talking self-published. We're talking an Italian comic. We're talking heavy metal magazine appearance, an ash can, a free comic book day issue, and... Mel V of the Mighty Mel V YouTube channel pointed out on his easel of elevation that Gut Ghost actually appeared on the back of the spread, the popular image comics title from Justin Jordan, on the back cover of issue 24. So to me, it'll be interesting to see how long this issue will stay hot, considering and there's all those other appearances in those other books. But time will tell. Right. And if it does stay hot, you should definitely be on the lookout for those other books and appearances from Gut Ghost. And as we make our way halfway through the list, coming in at number five, we have Avengers number 43. This is the first appearance of Red Guardian. And what can you tell us about this book, Jack? Well, this book got red hot post San Diego Comic-Con. Hall H, of course, was the biggest talk of the speculation community. And now we know David Harbour, AKA Hellboy, and AKA Hopper from Stranger Things is the Red Guardian. The Red Guardian is, of course, a superhero 
who at some time is romantically linked to Black Widow and will be appearing in the Black Widow movie. This book was selling recently for about $80 in the last few months, and a 9.2 just ended at $660. Given the prices that you're talking about right now, do you think it's worth buying at these prices, or do you think you kind of missed the boat on it and should wait to try to catch it at a lower price? Now, of course, sometimes books can go up, but I think something that's really indicative of the Hot 10 list is that the Hot 10 list is showing you where prices have come. At this point, I don't know that this is a great investment into the future. Instead, I would be looking to sell if I was sitting on Avengers 43 because these prices are absolutely astronomical compared to where this book has been trading at previous times. We got news that the character's in the movie. We've gotten news that there's been a casting choice for it. So now I guess the next bet, you might see another bump at trailer time, but who knows? I agree with you, and I think this is a perfect time, to, if you have it, to actually sell it and not be chasing it. The last thing you want is a Crossbones situation where everybody was excited for Crossbones appearance and then once we actually saw his role in the movie, those prices tanked immediately. Not saying that's going to happen to Red Guardian, but you have to ask yourself, is that a chance you're willing to take? And moving right along with even more movie news, coming at number four, we have Silver Surfer number 81. This is a book that literally has just spiked in the last day. I'm talking about a dollar bin book that is now selling for $25 to $30 with news that Tyrant will be appearing in upcoming Phase 4 MCU release alongside Galactus as the possible next big bad a la Thanos. So it appears this is reported by multiple media outlets this week, but it's also important to know that right now it's still just in the rumor stage. But be anxious to see if he can prove to be as big a baddie as Thanos was, because Thanos took the world by storm especially that extra credit scene at the end of the first avengers everyone came out of the walk about who is that except for actual comic book people so i'll be anxious to see how this plays out and if it is true if he can measure up to how well thanos was portrayed well i think the key is the fact that if tyrant's showing up it's going to lead to galactus which is something that marvel cinematic universe fans have been salivating for for a long time and i don't know that i would be paying 25 to 30 dollars for this book but all you dollar bin diggers out there should be hitting those bins and looking for this book right now because it's out there and you can make some serious profit. And I'm definitely more anxious to see Galactus in the MCU than how Fox would have portrayed him, that's for sure. Absolutely. And at number three is another book that's no stranger to the Hot 10 list. It's been on here before. And we're talking about What If number 10. This is another book that's seeing a rise again after Hall H News at San Diego Comic-Con. Right. And of course, we're talking about the first appearance of Jane Foster as Thor. Now, this first appearance of Jane Foster Thor is one of the most debated first appearances I've seen in my time in comics. We're talking about What If 10 popping. We're talking about Thor number one from 2014, the Jason Aaron run. We're talking about number two, number eight, as well as Thor God of Thunder number 25, all being debated as possible first appearances. But this What If number 10 seems to be setting the bar high with secondary market sales, with mid-grade raw copies selling for as high as $100 and nice mint copies selling for $200 plus. I myself would definitely not be chasing it for $100, $200, but this will fall back down at some point and it'd be well worth picking up at that time. Yes, for my money, I'm searching for that Thor number one from 2014 since Kevin Feige already said that this movie is gonna be based on that Jason Aaron run, but at the same point, the comics game is all about the true first appearance and scarcity and this book is definitely more scarce than that 2014 number one especially in high grade absolutely and kicking up even more heat from san diego comic-con news we have blade the vampire hunter number one now tomb of dracula number 10 seems to be out of reach for a lot of people right so this seems like the next logical choice is that why this one's gaining heat Oh, totally. It's funny because I've speculated on these types of plays before and they haven't really panned out for me in the past. A lot of times when certain characters were starting to blow up due to movie or TV news, I often thought to myself, well, maybe people won't be able to afford that first appearance and they'll want that first solo series. And it hasn't always proven to be true. But Blade doesn't appear in a ton of books, and Tomb of Dracula has long, long been sought after and has become an absolute astronomically priced book. And I think a lot of modern speculators are looking for low entry points into Blade collecting. And that's why this Blade number 1 is selling for $25 to $30, a book that had previously been dollar bin fodder. 
This is another book that you guys out there in the YouTube comic community, Simpleman's Comics Family, and of course, CBSI Nation, need to hit those back issue bins and see if you can find. I'll tell you one thing I think with Blade that might kind of buck the trend we normally do with movie spec. I think this might be one movie that might actually see a little bit more of a bump once it's released, especially with the casting choice they have out. But who knows? It might follow the same trend normally after a movie comes out. You see prices drop. But I have a feeling this one's going to make more fans of Blade, especially of people that aren't even aware of who the character actually is. Right. I often say in Feige we trust, but in this case, in Mahershala Ali we trust. I think that was home run casting, and he will do this character justice. Now, real quick, before we get into the number one pick, we have a giveaway courtesy of Ben C., owner of comicbookinvest.com. We are going to be giving away a Silent Partner Comics exclusive, Vampirella number one, Kendrick Lim, a.k.a. Kunkka, exclusive virgin variant. And if you know anything about Kendrick Lim, you know that his books have been red hot since he appeared on the market. He is a disciple of Archerm and a member of Archerm Collectibles family. We are going to give away one of these copies to one of you viewers, and all you've got to do is like the video, subscribe to the channel, and comment on the final video. We appreciate everybody in the live chat, but you have to comment on the final video to be entered in to qualify to win this book. So thank you to Ben C. from comicbookinvest.com, and be on the lookout for future giveaways as Ben C. is committed to giving away one book like this every single week on the CBSI Hot 10 Comics Show right here on Simple Mint's Comics YouTube channel. And with that being said, we're going to get into the number one pick right now, and it should be no surprise for anyone that's watched the hit Amazon series, and we're talking about The Boys Number 1. This cart in this classic is tearing up the secondary market with raw copies selling for as high as $80. Now, I have to admit, I had never read this series, but I subscribed to Amazon Prime just to watch this show, and boy, am I glad I did. It has to be one of the very best comic book shows I have ever seen, and totally one of my favorites. And I'll fully admit, like when this got optioned, I didn't expect the show to be that good, so I wasn't really chasing those books. Of course, now they're up there in price, and definitely deservedly so, because that show, just from the heat on that alone, minus the fact that it's a fantastic story by Garth Ennis, but this show, they're already filming season number two, and this book will continue to get hot as it gets more and more fans that result from watching that show. But it's important to note, and Ben Stein pointed this out to us, to look at Umbrella Academy, a book that dominated the Hot 10 comics list for CBSI, comicbookinvest.com, but in that lull between season one and season two, drop down significantly in price. Now, I'm not advocating you sell, but if you're not in this for the long haul, Maybe the time to sell is right now while people are watching this show and interested in this property and going out there looking for this book. But as Brian said, they're already moving on season two. So if you're a long-term speculator, you may want to hold out and see what season two has to bring. Because if you watch season one, it definitely ended on a cliffhanger. And I am interested to see what season two is going to bring us. And with that being said, there's your CBSI Hot 10 comic list for August 2nd, 2019. So thank you to Ben Stein, writer of the Hot 10 Comics list for CBSI and ComicBookInvest.com, as well as a podcaster on the Tales from the Flipside podcast. So make sure you tune in right here to Simple Man's Comics YouTube channel every Friday, 9 p.m. Eastern, for the CBSI Hot 10 Comics show. For ComicBookInvest.com, I'm Brian Wood. And I'm Jack DeMeo, a.k.a. Mr. Bolo. Make sure you guys are hitting those long boxes this week and looking for these hot keys. Buy what you like. That way you'll always be happy with your collection. I was found here.